Little did we know that a requirement for the college football playoff was it must include the Alabama Crimson Tide. Three years of the playoff, three years for Alabama in the playoff. Matt Schick, along with a Hall of Famer Mike Bellotti and former All-American at Oklahoma, former Chicago Bear Dusty Dvorak, uh, they just make it look so easy, Mike. Alabama excels so much at the physicality of the game. They can run the football and they can stop the run. And now they have a mobile quarterback that puts more hurt on you on defense. And they put hurt on opposing quarterbacks. I don't know if anybody in the country gets after the quarterback the way Alabama does with Tim Williams, Jonathan Allen and company, Jake Browning, any other opposing quarterback, they better watch out. We are going to dive deep into this year's version of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Again, 13-0, and looking for 15-0 and at another national championship. Look at some of the storylines from this season. And remember, a lot of curiosity about who would be the starting quarterback. Well, it was Blake Barnett. And that lasted all of about 12 minutes of game action. Jalen Hurts fumbled his first snap and threw for two TDs, ran for two more in the opener, and the rest was history. He's had plenty of help from offense, def uh, from defense and special teams. Eight straight games with a non-offensive touchdown 14 non-offensive touchdowns total and the defense did not allow a touchdown the entire month of November opposing teams ran zero negative yards in 43 percent of their offensive plays here's a look at how the tide rolled to the playoff coming off of a national championship there's always a challenge not to be complacent is this the year that starting the season with a first-year starting quarterback finally catches up with Nick Saban? There's going to be a ton to teach after this game. And if we don't start doing things right, we're not going to have the kind of success that we're capable of. Four legit road tests where I look at them, I don't see how they get through it. Ball is loose. Picked up Alabama. Touchdown. Intercepted Alabama. He's got an escort. He's going to go all the way. If you're Alabama, you're pretty excited right now about being 3-0. Loose and Bama has done it again. Seven of 11 starters have scored on this defense. They take the ball away and they give their offense good field position, but now Hurts is starting to come on. Keeper by Jalen Hurts. Touchdown! He's become the team leader. He's got a little dog in him. He's a great competitor and they trust and believe in him. Jalen Hurts breaks away. Deep into time for the Crimson Tide. Nick Saban brings the number one ranked Crimson Tide team into Baton Rouge. Come down to the trenches every year. Our front seven versus whoever they got a better blockers. Fournette looking for a hole. Oh my goodness, he was crushed. Hurts fakes a pitch out to the left, breaks a tackle, still going. Jalen Hurts, touchdown Alabama. No doubt about who the number one team in the country is. We have to finish the season the right way. I can't wait to go down to Tuscaloosa and ruin their season, man. Here's Hurts, calls his number. Touchdown! Alabama! Stewart gets free. Touchdown! Alabama! Bama wins 30 to 12. 24th win in a row for the Crimson Tide. The legacy of this team is still out there. How we finish will really determine the success of this team. Appleby throws across the middle, intercepted Alabama, taken by Minka Fitzpatrick. He is in! Touchdown, Alabama! Pressure and it's blocked by Alabama. Taken down the right sideline. Touchdown, Alabama! And the Crimson Tide is going to win their 26th SEC championship. You got to give the players and our coaching staff a lot of credit. This was a tough one. There's a lot of things we need to improve on. Whoever we play is going to be a really, really good team. We need to play better. We need to improve. Well, uh, just part of the process for head coach Nick Saban. Just need to improve. Uh, you wondered how they would improve at the quarterback position. It's not like Jay Coker was a world beater last year, but he did what was needed. And now they had to replace him, and Jalen Hurts goes from virtual unknown to SEC Offensive Player of the Year. What did he provide this team that they didn't have before? Well, true mobility at the quarterback position. Not the ability to create when things broke down and to hurt a defense with his speed. He's a big, strong, physical guy, over 210 pounds. And it's not that he can't throw the ball, but when he tucks it and starts to run, it's scary because he has the speed and the agility to beat almost any defense out there. It's designed quarterback run game. It's when there's nothing down the field. He can just make a play, as we saw against LSU. He was a difference against the Tigers in Baton Rouge that night. Without him, 
Alabama might not be undefeated and in this same situation, so we forget he's a true freshman because he plays much more mature than what his age is. And you could tell when he came in against USC when they had to uh, sit down uh, Cooper Bateman. And Blake you know, Barnett. Blake yeah. Barnett. It was a completely yeah. different dynamic at the offensive position. And whether it was Greg McElroy, A.J. McCarron, <laughs> Alabama's never had this. So we talk about all these great Nick Saban Alabama teams. Well, now you add dual threat quarterback to the mix. Good luck trying to stop that. Well, and hats off to Lane Kiffin. Third year in a row with a new starter at quarterback, and he makes it go. He makes the offense not just uh, ability to stay with the defense, but one of the best in the nation. When you look at Jalen Hurts, though, uh, since October 7th, if there's a vulnerability here with this team, ha hasn't been the most polished in terms of holding on to the football. Look at since week seven, uh, turnovers, 10, fumbles, seven. That's the most. Uh, three fumbles lost as well since week seven. Uh, ball security, how much of a concern is that? Though? It's a concern. Nine interceptions, you reference all the fumbles. So as they get into this championship playoff football, he's going to have to take care of the football. He, whatever, whatever that football is in your hands is the most important thing that there is. So I, I believe that Nick Saban, Lane Kiffin, these guys will get him to understand that. He'll take better, better care of the football. Probably won't put him in as many situations uh, to make mistakes with the ball, but clearly ball security of the utmost importance for Jalen Hurts. And that's the Achilles heel for this Alabama football team is turnovers. They're their own worst enemy. They don't have to worry about the team that they play. They should just worry about themselves and making sure that they do not turn the ball over, do not give the other team short field or easy opportunities. The tide, though, when you go defensively, I mean, you can turn the ball over if you're on offense for Alabama because you have that security blanket being defensively. What makes them so elite defensively where they're just allowing just a shade over two yards a rush and allowing three rushing touchdowns all year? Well, they're offense on defense, right? Because they can score just like an offense. But I just think it's the overall athleticism and, for me, the ability to dominate the line of scrimmage and get after quarterbacks. This pass rush, it's off the charts, unbelievable. You give a quarterback no time to sit back there and throw the football. That leads to takeaways, sack fumbles, interceptions. So for me, it's that front seven uh, when they bring Reuben Foster, when they blitz, but when they can just sit there and rush four guys and get there as if they're blitzing, that ability to completely dominate opposing offensive lines, for me, that separates them from anyone else in the country. And it's a physicality of the front four, whoever they choose to play there. But you're right, it's the four-man pass rush that still puts pressure on the quarterback but allows them to play any form of seven-man coverage in the back end that they want. It's confusing to the offense, confusing to the quarterback, but the physicality at the line of scrimmage is a difference maker. 14 non-offensive touchdowns. When you look at turnover margin, we were talking about that. 25-game win streak, the tied plus 17 in turnover margin during that span, including seven to one margin in SEC championship and college football playoff games. Now, when you want to beat the best, uh, be the best, you got to beat the best. And some teams say, well, we want Bama then. Well, as Ryan McGee explains, careful what you wish for there. This season, the signs have popped up all over the place. We want Bama. From Washington to Western Michigan to Cleveland, we want Bama. Really? That's what you're going with. You know, people have asked for this before. I seem to recall Missouri chanting, we want Bama, back in 2014 after they won the SEC East. The next week, they got them. They lost 42 to 13. I also remember 2013, when some Oregon students got all turned up and started selling, we want Bama t-shirts. Yet, they don't sell those anymore. I did find an LSU, we want Bama shirt on eBay. It can be yours for four bucks or best offer. It's from 2011. The Tigers won that game, but they lost to the Tide two months later in the national championship and haven't beaten them since. 0 for 6. This year, USC said they wanted Bama. So did Ole Miss, Arkansas, Tennessee, A&M, Mississippi State, Auburn, and Florida. How'd that work out? This is a team that hasn't lost in 25 games. Their defense outscores some offenses, and they didn't give up a touchdown the entire month of November. What was supposed to be this team's weakness, a true freshman quarterback, has turned into a Heisman contender. That's why these days, any declaration of, we want Bama, is tongue in cheek, sarcastic, ironic. At least, it's supposed to be. Sometimes you gotta be careful what you wish for. I didn't hold that sign up. And that 
takes us back to Washington. Somewhere out there right now, there's someone dressed in purple and gold working diligently on a new sign. They're serious. They've got paint and markers just to work it. Their plan is to walk into the Georgia Dome on New Year's Eve and proudly hold up those three carefully crafted words. We want Bama. You know what, dude? I've got bad news. This is the college football playoff, and Bama wants you. Well, last 25 games, those who have wanted Bama have been beat by Bama. Back in week three of the 2015 season, Alabama fell to Ole Miss in Tuscaloosa. Since that loss, 25 straight wins, two SEC championships, one national championship, all 25 wins during the streak by more than a field goal, and 22 of those 25 wins have come by double digits. Coming up, you can't dominate college football if you don't dominate the SEC. That's what Nick Saban has done in Tuscaloosa. Just part of the process for the game's best coach. Also coming up, predictions for the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. See, I was born to be a legend. Talked about forever whenever I am mentioned. People won't remember that I would never quit, never stop, never let up, and that I would never give any thought to surrender. Victory is a necessity. Victory is in my death. Road to the college football playoff is brought to you by Subway Restaurants and K Jewelers. For 100 years, every kiss begins with K. They not only expect to create turnovers, they expect to score with it. You can't find a bigger, more athletic front in the country than the Tide. He can not only hold up well in the run, but he can get after the passer, too. Pressured and slammed down, and that's Jonathan Allen. The talented Mika Fitzpatrick. How about it, folks? 100 yards of glory. So tough to get wide on these linebackers. Foster flies in there. Oh! And he took a lick from Foster. Maybe the best pass rusher in our conference. That is the pass rushing specialist, Tim Williams. This Alabama defense is vintage. Now, how good is this Alabama defense? The word we'd like to use is very. Uh, their scoring defense, the best in the FBS since 2012, which it was also Bama in 2012. They've allowed fewer than 250 yards a game this season, the fewest by a team in seven seasons. Opponents rushing for just shade over 63 yards per game on Bama, the lowest number in the FBS in eight seasons. The defense has delivered four national titles during Saban's tenure in Tuscaloosa, but also five SEC titles. And more often than not, you can't have one without the other. Nick Saban has made Alabama the, the dominant program and, and made us all think of them when we think of the first Saturday in December in Atlanta. Uh, one thing that he had talked about all along was in order to win a championship, you must first have a team full of champions. And I think that resonated with me and that resonated with the team. I'm just proud of the fact that we won the SEC championship and I'm gonna just enjoy that for now. It just brought smiles to everybody's faces. You know, Bama is back, and, and watching Nick Saban build the program, and not only through recruiting, but through selling the university and bringing the fans in and, and bringing the alums in. It was a total transformation. Nick Saban comes in and makes it very clear that from that moment on, Alabama football is going to speak with only one voice, and that's going to be his. Keep prepares people for big games better than anything, but I think the key is, is you can't get caught up in the hype, but rather the preparation of how to go handle the situation. You think about the run and the dynasty that Alabama's had over the last nine years, and it's, it's special, I'll be honest with you, to say that I was a part of that. I'm just really proud of our team winning the SEC championship. You know, is really a significant accomplishment, so uh, this is a great win for Alabama. Their goal is to get to Atlanta every year because I think Saban understands that if he's got a team that's good enough to win the SEC championship game, he's going to have a great chance to win the national championship. My whole thing about trying to get these guys ready to play in this game was so that they had a chance to be SEC champions. 
I think in some ways you don't think as much about the SEC titles because of the national championships, but I think to him they are very significant and uh, because it is so difficult to get it. First of all, I'd like to congratulate our team. You know, they really deserve this. They really worked hard this year and fought a lot of adversity. Just getting to the SEC championship game, it might be a good season in some locales, but in the West in particular, there's so much pressure now to find a way, do what we got to do to unseat Alabama. And I think that's what's raised the stakes even higher across the league. The man is the best coach in college football. I, I'll be willing to listen to your arguments against that, but I won't take your arguments to heart. The process, people get tired of hearing about it. It's corny, it's a bumper sticker, it's whatever. It works. And as they showed us even in 2011, you don't have to even win your division to win a national championship, but five SEC crowns under Nick Saban, three straight, four national titles. How has Nick Saban done it, Mike Bellotti? There are two elements to it. One is recruiting, and recruiting, and I say that it's evaluation and then finishing recruiting, getting the kids to come, and then developing that talent on campus. The second part of it is vision and focus, and the ability to focus on every single game, uh, not play down to the level of your opponents, find a way to win, and find to make sure that they don't enjoy too much till the end of the season, but the end of the season when you're national champion, there's a lot of enjoyment to go around. Yeah, and, and enjoying it and staying hungry. I mean, consistently keeping this team not only performing, but Dusty, as a former player yourself, preventing them from being content with all they've accomplished. How how challenging is that for a coach and player? Unbelievably challenging. You know, I played on some really good teams, played for some national championships, and I remember going back that next year, even though we lost, felt pretty good about ourselves. Nick Saban's ability um, to keep his players hungry, to demand excellence for him, his staff, and his players to never be satisfied, that's one of the key secrets to all the success that they've had there. And I thought that was on, illustrated against USC this season. You know, that first game of the year, USC was the team that needed to make a splash, that needed to make a statement. What was Alabama going to do after they had just won a national championship? They won 52 to 6. It was Alabama that said, this year is this year, last year is last year. They weren't resting on last year's success. They came out and said, this is a new football team, a new identity, and they made a statement from day number one. The, the one voice thing, too, is important because he doesn't allow other coaches to speak on his staff about what their goals are. He states the goals. He keeps them focused. He talks to his team and his players and his coaching staff about the vision of this one game at a time, the process that's so important. And I think that's unique. Sometimes you get a lot of messages from the offensive corner and defense. Well, we're really happy about our game or not have, but it doesn't matter. It's about winning the football game as a total team. And we talk about this age of entitlement, right? Yeah. I mean, so many kids coming in, they've already felt like they've made it, and especially when you go to Alabama. Oh, we're joining Alabama. Even the players are already there. No one's entitled. No one has done anything. It's about the process, as Nick Saban says, almost uh, ad nauseum at times, but it's true. And as, as Coach said, it's one voice, it's one message, and everybody buys in. And I, don't, I can't think of another coach in college football right now that year in, year out, gets the most out of their players every single year. It's truly amazing what Nick Saban's been able to do. How much of it is not just how good of a coach he is, but how demanding he is where you don't want to let him down. You almost have a healthy fear of your coach, whether you're a player or an assistant coach. You don't want to let anything, anybody down. I've talked to some people who've worked for Nick Saban. There's not a lot of relaxation or comfort <laughs> zone on that staff. There is tremendous competition every day to get better to prove yourself to your teammates, to prove yourself to the coaching staff. And I think that works because competition breeds success. And you don't want to let him down, and it's also the fear factor, right? Because, yeah. I mean, you're terrified of the man. You don't want him <laughs> jumping down your throat. You don't know what Nick Saban's capable of. Don't get me wrong. He's a heck of a football coach, but he comes across as not as the, the nicest of men, which is fine. But there is a fear factor that I think that his players, his coaches, you walk on eggshells around him, and you're, it's almost like you want to satisfy him, but you're terrified of what might happen if you don't satisfy him. I can be replaced as a player. I can be replaced as a coach, whether I'm a walk-on or an offensive coordinator. 
He's got five or ten ex-head coaches on that staff as consultants <laughs> right. to sort of step in. You don't do a very good job That's today. Right. You may not be there tomorrow. That's right. Uh, it's been a remarkable run, and if they win another national championship, it will be five national championships in ten seasons for Nick Saban at Alabama. He's batting 500. When we return, we'll look ahead to that national semifinal against Washington. Will Alabama win it? We get our players to play to a standard. There's a lot of expectation for what our players are expected to accomplish. And the Crimson Tide is going to win their 26th SEC championship. Regardless of the expectation, our players focus on the standard. Road to the college football playoff is brought to you by K Jewelers. For 100 years, every kiss begins with K. And Dodge. Welcome back in as we put the finishing touches on this road to the playoff featuring the Tide. Matt Schick, Mike Bellotti, Dusty Dvorak. All right, I'm going to put you guys on the spot. Give me the percent chance that Alabama wins the national semifinal against Washington. Percent chance. I'll go 60%. 60%. Dusty? I'm going to go 75%. 75. Uh, wow, let's split the difference. The football power index saying 68% chance. Gotta split down the middle. There, there you go. 68. I mean, you guys are... Uh, as it worked together before. All right, so Alabama favored, whether it's Vegas, whether it's FPI. Uh, what do they need to do to make sure that happens, Mike? Not turn the ball over. Make sure that they stop any trick plays that Washington and Chris Peterson have dreamed up over this uh, preparation time. I think just be themselves. If they're, they're themselves, run the ball, and Jalen Hurts does not turn it over, they're going to have a chance. It's tough to beat them. Coach is right. you got to take care of the football, but defensively, harass Jake Browning. We've been talking about this pass mm -hmm. rush all day. His weapons outside with Pettis, with Ross, that's how they'll try to exploit Alabama. So continuous pressure on Jake Browning. I expect it. And I expect Alabama to take care of business. Okay. Both of you guys uh, taking Bama here. And if they win out, that'll be four national titles in six seasons to seven losses.